While the world argues over billionaires in tech and sports, old money has been playing the long game for centuries. Today, we reveal just how deep their pockets go. What does real power look like? It's not just about flashy spending and headline-making donations. It's about the quiet accumulation of wealth that has shaped economies and influenced politics for centuries. Today, we pull back the curtain on the world's wealthiest old money families, revealing how their discreet yet substantial influence continues to play a crucial role in global economics. The concept of compounding wealth is epitomized by the long-standing fortunes of old money families. These dynasties have not just maintained their wealth, they've exponentially increased it across generations through astute investments and the power of compound interest. Perhaps no example is as profound as that of John D. Rockefeller, the patriarch of the Rockefeller family. Starting with investments in oil refineries in the late 19th century, his wealth burgeoned to about $1.5 billion by the time of his death in 1937, an amount equivalent to about 1.5% of the US GDP at the time. Adjusted for inflation, this would be approximately $340 billion today, showcasing an immense compounding effect over several decades. Another striking example is the Vanderbilt family, who during the 19th century transformed initial investments in water transport and railroads into an enormous fortune. At its peak, Cornelius Vanderbilt's wealth was so vast that he was one of the richest men in America. By the time of his death in 1877, his estate was worth upwards of $100 million, equivalent to around $3 billion today. The Vanderbilt fortune showcased how strategic investments in burgeoning industries could yield returns that grow exponentially over decades, or take the case of the Walton family, heirs to the Walmart fortune. When Sam Walton passed away in 1992, his estate was valued at about $100 billion in today's dollars. Thanks to savvy investment strategies and the exponential growth of Walmart, his heirs have seen this fortune grow to over $200 billion by 2024. This growth is a classic example of how reinvestment and business expansion can leverage compound interest over time. Another vivid illustration comes from the House of Saud, which controls a significant part of Saudi Arabia's wealth derived from oil. Estimated to control assets worth over $1.4 trillion, the family's wealth has grown through strategic investments in various sectors beyond oil, including tech and real estate, compounded over decades. In a different vein, consider the Duke of Westminster, one of the UK's wealthiest individuals. The Grosvenor estate, which has been in the family since 1677, has grown its value through careful management and development of prime real estate in London. The estate is currently valued at around 10 billion pounds, up from approximately 100 million pounds in the early 20th century, showcasing an annual growth rate that significantly outstrips inflation. History's greatest upheavals have often served as both a challenge and an opportunity for the world's wealthiest families. Let's explore how specific historical events dramatically shaped the fortunes of old money. During World War I, the total cost to Britain alone was a staggering 35 billion pounds, roughly equivalent to 217 billion dollars today. For the British aristocracy, this meant a severe depletion of cash reserves as the government levied heavy taxes on the wealthy to fund the war effort. Land had to be sold. Magnificent estates shrunk. By the time the war ended, many noble families had lost a significant portion of their wealth. The Astor family, however, managed a strategic pivot. They invested in infrastructure and war supplies, emerging from the war more influential than ever. Across the Atlantic, the 1929 Wall Street crash saw fortunes evaporate overnight, but not for all. Joseph Kennedy, 
patriarch of the Kennedy family, anticipated the crash and vastly diversified his investments beforehand. He moved large portions of his wealth into real estate and liquor imports post-prohibition, seeing his net worth soar as America's economy recovered. In the aftermath of World War II, the German nobility faced unprecedented losses as Allied bombings decimated industrial wealth. The Thurn and Taxis family, however, leveraged their vast land holdings and transitioned into logistics and banking, setting foundations for wealth that would span generations. Old money doesn't just signify wealth. It represents a significant part of the economic disparity we see in today's world. Let's delve into the wealth and income ratios that illustrate just how concentrated old money really is. In the late 19th century, wealth income ratios in Europe were extraordinarily high, particularly in countries like France and the UK, where they hovered around 600-700%. This means that the total wealth of the nation was six to seven times greater than the total national income annually. Such figures underscore a stark concentration of wealth largely held by aristocratic families who had accumulated assets over centuries. Fast forward to the 21st century and the landscape has evolved, but the disparities remain striking. For instance, in 2019, the top 1% of wealth holders in the United States controlled approximately 35% of the country's wealth. Meanwhile, the bottom 50% held just 2%. This concentrated wealth has profound implications, not just economically, but socially and politically. In the early 20th century, giants of industry like the Carnegies and Rockefellers didn't just accumulate wealth. They also played pivotal roles in shaping the modern industrial landscape of America. For instance, John D. Rockefeller, at his peak, controlled an amount equivalent to about 2% of the US GDP. In today's terms, with the US GDP at around $21 trillion, this would be roughly $420 billion, a testament to the monumental scale of his influence and philanthropic contributions. Contrast this with the average US household income in the 1920s, which was around $3,300 per year, equivalent to about $51,000 today. While these figures represent stark economic disparity, they also highlight the transformative era of American industrial growth facilitated by such wealth. The investments made by these families in various sectors spurred innovations and job creations that have had long-lasting effects on the economy. Fast forward to the present, and we see that while the top 1% continue to hold a significant portion of wealth, their influence isn't just financial. Many old money families have become patrons of the arts, education and healthcare, using their wealth to fund scholarships, hospitals and cultural institutions. Recent data reveals that wealth mobility in the United States has been on the decline over the past few decades. According to research from the Federal Reserve Bank, a family's place in the wealth distribution has become increasingly rigid since the 1980s. More families are staying in the same region of the wealth distribution, and among those families that do move, those movements are smaller on average than in the past. A pivotal factor in wealth mobility is the type of assets families hold. Those who own businesses and real estate beyond their primary residences are more likely to experience large upward movements in wealth. These riskier asset classes come with higher volatility, but also the potential for higher returns. For instance, families that made significant jumps in wealth often did so through strategic investments in emerging markets or by capitalizing on new technological advancements, initial capital and access to lucrative investment opportunities are substantial barriers to wealth mobility. The data shows that economic timing and market conditions significantly affect one's ability to climb the wealth ladder. 
For example, those who invested in the tech industry during its nascent stage or prior to major technological advancements often saw exponential growth in their wealth, reflecting broader economic trends. Old money families with their established assets and networks generally experience less volatility in their wealth status. Their investments are often conservative, focusing on wealth preservation. In contrast, new money includes first-generation wealth builders who often engage in more dynamic and high-risk ventures. This group is more likely to see significant fluctuations in their wealth, driven by both market successes and downturns. For instance, the rise of tech billionaires in the past few decades showcases how new industries can create vast fortunes rapidly, contrasting with the slow, steady growth seen in traditional sectors dominated by old money. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the numbers behind old money wealth. As we consider its impact, both past and present, let's also think about the future we want to build and the role such wealth should play in it.